Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to you get that A in your coursework. And today we're here with encrypting a string and decrypting a string using Java. So for this tutorial, we're going to be using the cryptography library built into Java. So let's get right into it. Be sure to import these libraries at the top of your code. So we've got a string here called text, and that's going to be what we want to encrypt. We've got a try catch statement, and we've got three shells for what will be functions to allow us to encrypt and decrypt text. So let's get into it. Firstly, let's go to our generate key uh, function. Inside, we need to have a try catch statement. That means execute some code. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch statement so the program doesn't crash. And inside, we've got key generator. Key generator equals key generator dot get instance encryption type. What's going on there? Well, firstly, uh, this function is public static. It's a secret key type, which means it's going to return a secret key to whatever it's called. And it's called generate key. And we pass in a string called encryption type. That's going to allow Java to know what encryption algorithm we want it to do on our data. So what we're doing here, we're creating a, an object which can generate encryption keys and we're essentially just passing in, hey, we want to do this type of encryption. Then we do secret key my key equals key generated dot generate key. Essentially, we're creating a key, an encryption key, and it's going to be set to whatever our key generator, which we created here, generates. And then we return it. If the code fails, we just return a null. Now that we've got that done, so in our try catch now, we're going to add. So in our try catch now, we've added three lines of code. Secret key, key equals generate key, AES. So what does AES stand for? Well, AES stands for Advanced Encryption Standards. And it was established in 2001 by the US. Uh, Cypher, Chipper, we're just creating um, a Cypher here. And we're going to create a, using our Cypher object, which I called Chipper we're going to get an instance of AES. Essentially, we're telling this cipher that we need to use AES encryption. Now, let's go to our encrypt string function, which is public static byte array encrypt string, and it takes in a string called data to encrypt, a secret key called my key, and a cipher, which we're going to call cipher in this case, not to confuse it with chipper up here. I called it chipper because when I first did encryption at GCSE, I used to call it um, Chipper. So it'd be a Caesar Chipper as opposed to a Caesar Cipher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get into what we have to do. So we need to have a try catch statement like before. And firstly, we're going to do byte array text equals data to encrypt referencing this string here dot get bytes and Unicode format. So essentially, we're converting that string into a byte array as we need to use bytes for the encryption, not just a string. And we're passing in Unicode format, which is here, which is UTF-8, because by default, get bytes will use whatever format your computer is using by default. And we want this to kind of work seamlessly, assuming the computer supports Unicode, UTF-8, which it should do. After that, we're going to call our little cipher and we're going to initialize it and it's cipher encrypt mode saying, right, we want this cipher object to encrypt our data, not decrypt it. And we also pass in my key to know what key we're going to be using to encrypt it. Then we do byte array text encrypted, it can be whatever you want, equals cipher dot do final text. That's saying, hey, go and encrypt my data and then send all that to my byte array called text encrypted. So that's the encrypted data in a byte array. Then we return it. Obviously, we return null if this fails. You can do what you want there. Now, we're going to go straight into our decrypt string uh, um, function method, sorry. So it's a public static string. So it returns a string. It's called decrypt string. And we pass in a byte array of the data we want to decrypt. It needs to be bytes as if we converted this result to a string and then back into a byte array, it may not work. So we have to keep it in bytes. So we do byte data to decrypt. We do secret key, my key, and cipher, cipher. Inside, we're going to do a try catch. 
And as you can see, this is very similar to what we did before. So you do cipher init, cipher dot decrypt mode and my key. We're essentially doing what we did here, but we're telling the cipher, hey, we want to decrypt this data as opposed to encrypting already encrypted data. Then we do a byte array text decrypted equals cipher dot do final data to decrypt. Exactly the same as before, but with decrypting data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert uh, that decrypted data from a byte array to a string. So you just do a string result equals new string. Then you pass in text decrypted, aka that byte array. Then we return the result. And obviously you can do, I have actually got um, it to print out the exception there because I did encounter an error when making this and it's handy to have. Obviously also return null. Now, now that we've got the functions made, let's go into the rest of the code. So we've got byte ar array, encrypted data equals encrypt string, text, key, and chipper, our little cipher. And this is essentially calling our encrypt string function, and it's going to return a byte array. And then we do string encrypted string equals new string encrypted data. So we're just converting this encrypted data into a string. We're then going to print it out to show you that the encryption works. So string decrypted is going to store the decryption of our encrypted data. And we're going to be calling our decrypt string function, even though we're technically decrypting a byte array. But anyway, uh, we pass in encrypted data, we pass in the byte array, we don't pass in the string, because sometimes that won't work. Uh, we pass in the key and our little chipper, which is our cipher. I have to keep clarifying just in case someone thinks, oh, he's not pronouncing cipher properly. Yes, I am, but I used to call them chipper, like I said before. And then we do system.out.println decrypted, which is our string there. And obviously you could put stuff in there, but I haven't. So that's all for this tutorial. So let's show it in action. As you can see, we firstly, we printed the uh, encrypted data. In fact, at the start, it looks like a little face. <laughs> and then after it says, subscribe to Max O'Diddly. Uh, let's do this again, but with um, something else. I don't know, let's do Hello World. Pretty original right there. As you can see, it has encrypted the data. And if we just do it again for the same thing, it changes each time, which means it's working. Um, let's do one more. Let, let's put in some numbers and some and, and some words. Oh, let's put some special characters in here. Let's try and, you know, try and break it a bit. Well, it won't break. As you can see, it still works. So, guys, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. If you want more encryption tut tutorials for, like, all my file handling videos, leave in the comments. I'll probably do it anyways. Subscribe if you want more tutorials. And thanks for being a great audience. And I'll see you next time. Adios.